welcome to my channel. My name's Deb and this is DB Designs and Sewing Australia. Now today I'm going to be showing you how to make single seam bunting. Uh, when I did my sewing room tour, I showed you the bunting that I've made for my sewing room and asked if anyone would like to know how to make bunting where you only sew one seam per flag. And a lady called Michelle said that she would like to see how to make that. So today I'm going to show you how to make it. Now this is all made with one square of fabric. Oh, first of all, I am using my daughter Lucy's sewing machine. And when I got it out last night thinking I better run this machine for a while, it hasn't seen the light of day for a while. And this proves that I don't think she's sewn for five years. She just gets me to sew for her. And when I tried to use it, I thought, any wonder she doesn't sew. This machine is terrible. So I did some maintenance on it, found that she had seven different types of bobbins and only one fitted it. And looked up a maintenance manual, saw how to oil it, um, did not redo the timing on the bobbin, which I suspect is slightly out but it's running better than it was. So I thought I'll just give it a bit of a turn today and I'll have to take it to my sewing machine mechanic man and see if he can make it run smoothly. It is a bit of a noisy clickety clackety machine. It's actually a Singer 5530. It actually runs really well. It took the oil fine. I undid the screws on the top, took the whole thing apart and tried to fix it up for her. But I suspect that's why she gave up on the sewing a bit. She did used to do quite a bit of sewing, but sort of gave up on it. And I think possibly it's because the machine she was using, and I can't even remember where she got this. Um, I, the machine she was using was just not very good. When the machine you're using is not very good, it really makes it not a great experience to sew when you've got things chewing fabric up and all that type of thing. But today we're going to do the bunting. Now to be making bunting that is made from a six and a half inch square. Now the bunting that I made for my sewing room is actually ten and a half, oh no, ten inch square. Which And this is a template that I use. I just made these out of cardboard because it's easy to lay a whole lot of fabrics on top of each other and use a rotary cutter. But I did see when I was at Spotlight, if you go into the quilting department and look at all their rulers, they've actually got big squares, little squares, medium sized squares, all in the ruler, in the ruler plastic which would be actually really good if you were really into making things that you were using just squares for. But anyway, this is the one I used for my big bunting and this is the one I'm using for my bunting today. So you just cut your squares out using a template or measuring and using your sewing ruler or your quilting ruler and this is what you end up with. You end up with squares of fabric. Now this is black and gold Christmas fabric. You can see this is little Christmas trees. And this one is just, I think it's like a type of holly design. It's really cute fabric. And here's some pieces that I've actually already made up, some little flags. And that one is stars glasses on. This is another type of floral one and there's some bigger type of stars. So they're all black and gold so I thought I'd make some bunting for the house and show you how I do it at the time. And as for the um, for the binding I'm just using ready-made bias binding tape. It's two centimeters wide. Okay so this is the wide bias tape that I had in my stash. Not sure if I had it from mum or I don't know, for some reason I had some, I have got some purchase bias tape. You can also use things 
like the tape that I use in um, some of my aprons. Now this is just a 100% cotton, I think it's called herringbone tape. And it's just a tape, you could also fold that over. But what I found the best trick to making bunting is, is that you need to use tape that presses really well. You can see here, I've already started to press this tape. This is where it's unpressed. And here's where I've started to press it. You need to, if you get a really good crisp crease in it, then you'll have a much better time getting your bunting inside it. Okay, let's start. So the first thing you've got to do is, you've got your square of fabric, you're just folding it corner to corner. So you've just made a triangle like that. And we are sewing one seam from this top corner to the bottom corner. And I am back stitching on both ends. And the width stitch I'm using is just the width of the foot. So I'll show you that stitching because I, I did use white cotton in my bobbin. So you can see it's just a straight line, just a straight line. And now I'm going to trim that corner, just the corner, not the other part. Now I usually use my point turner to press, but you don't have to use a point turner. When I show the next one, I won't use a point turner and I'll show you how I press it. But you're just pressing that seam open. It's really hard to iron with your left hand. So I'm only pressing it open like that. So now the seam's open. I'm just turning the flag out the right way. Pushing those corners open. And I will use my purple fang to press those corners out. But you really want to get as sharp as corner as point as what you can get on your flag without pushing through your fabric. So that's a fairly good point. And so now what you've got is you've got your seam up the back and at the front you'll have your flag. Now what you want to do is then go in and press your flag and you'll know you've got it in the right spot because your point will come down and be on your seam line. So once you're happy with that placement, just give it a press both sides. And now you've got this flap here and this just gets tucked inside. So now the only raw edge you've got is the actual, what I would call the back part of the flag, but that is going to be encased inside the binding. So you'll have a flag that you've made with one seam and you're only going to have to sew the binding on to seal the whole thing up. So let's make another one. Here's a little Christmas tree one. Okay. So you can't see me, but you can see what I'm doing. So here we've got our piece again. And I know it's hard to see because it's black. But if I put some clips on it, you'll be able to see where I'm going to sew. So I have clipped that edge I'm going to sew 
There's the folded edge and this is the raw edges together. So I'm just using the width of the foot, not measuring anything, not being too fussy because it's bunting, it's not something that has to fit you. The main thing you want to do is make sure that all of your bunting is the same size, unless you were going for the look of um, large bunting, small bunting, which can look very effective. So I just thought that to show you, I would make some Christmas bunting and then I'll be able to use it in the house as my husband is a very big Christmas decorator. Very big. Okay, so you can see we've got that line of stitching here. Here's the fold. This is the raw edges together. Now I'm just clipping. And what I'm doing off camera is I don't clip onto the floor. I actually clip into a waste basket because I don't put little clippings like that into my poof that I've got all my um, scraps in. I don't put um, cotton threads that I've snipped off everything. I don't put little trimming edges on from that. Because I put them into the bin. And I must say, I need to replace my cream bottle. That I, I have a cream bottle just from a 300 mil cream and I've poked a hole in the top and screwed the lid back on and when I've got sharps like sewing machine needles I pop them in there but the last one I, I actually had a fair few needles in there so I put it in the bin and I haven't got around to making another one yet but that's just a good way of doing your own sharps bottle um, oh okay I was not going to do it on this this time Okay, so if you don't have a point turner, and I've just finger pressed this now, and what I want to do is press it without pressing those sides. I don't want to make creases in these sides because it's the wrong way out. So, as you can see, you don't have to have a point turner to do this. A pressing point turner. So now we've turned it out the right way. You will have to have some sort of an instrument to poke into your corners. But, you know, you can use a chopstick. The only thing is, just don't use anything that's too, too pointy because you'll end up going through the end. And now we've got this here. And to make sure it's centred before I press it, I'm just folding this end down to make sure that this point here is going to meet the center, the center seam that I've created. And when I'm happy that it is, just giving it a press. And now I'm tucking that in. I think we should make one in a different fabric so that it's easier for you to see. So here's some little Christmas tree fabric. So I'm just getting right sides together, corner to corner. This machine is very clattery. Whereas I have got an, my other machine that I sew my jeans with, that's an all metal machine that's old, does not make that no sort of noise. So, clipping off the corner. giving that seam a press. I just think if you press it as you go, you're gonna get a much nicer looking flag.
Much nicer looking. Turning it out the right way. Poking those corners out. Well, I nearly went through that. Lining it up so that when this point comes down, so that when this point comes down, it is touching the center. So that's just an additional piece of bunting that I can pop on with this one. And as you can see, I've sewn the back with white thread so you can see it. Now, let's join all of these ones onto our tape. Now, there's so many different ways that you can set bunting up. I have seen people with it crossed over like this and it actually looks really, really nice. If I was going to do it like that, then I'd measure how far over I was crossing it to make it even, but that's just me. So you can do it like that so that it's all joined up or you can do it separated. It probably depends how much fabric you've got, how much time you've got, and how far a distance you want this bunting to reach over. But we're just going to join it piece by piece. So what you will want to do is, I've got five different fabrics, so I need to decide where I'm going to be putting them. As you can see, there's so many different ways to set it up. You could do it like that where it's overlapping and you've got one center one and in fact I was thinking that I have to make my uh, I need to make my granddaughter Mia the new baby a Santa sack and I always uh, put their names on the Santa sack so I was thinking that I would make some bunting and um, sew it into the Santa sack because her name's Mia. It's only three letters. It's going to be, I thought that would look really nice to have um, her name on flags on the front of the Santa sack because I'm not, I usually use the Very Hungry Caterpillar um, Santa panels and I put some wadding in between them and a lot and um, a lot I put a lining on the back of that and I usually quilt around the Santa and quilt around the Christmas tree and the presents I have got a photo of uh, Phoebe's that I made so I'll put that in and show you what I mean by the Santa set but I thought that I might I cannot get a panel that I like that um, I cannot get the Very Hungry Caterpillar um, panel either. Okay, so now we're going to join up. We're going to put in I don't need you to be able to see. So, what we're doing is we're putting this flag as far up into the crease as we can. So basically all the way to the top of the crease. So here's my bias binding and it is ironed in half. So this is actually an opening piece. So I'm going to put my piece of flag in there. Remember, the only raw edge there is. I'm 
and you can use pins or clips or you can't use pins because they don't work you can use clips it probably depends what fabric you've got this fabric's um i did notice that when i cut it that it was um some of this is quite embossed this gold on it so probably um that's why the pin won't go through it So I'm just fitting this right up into the top as far as I can. Of course, when you're not on camera, this really takes no time at all. And I will stitch along quite close to this edge here. And then we'll slot another flag in. Now, when I know how long I want to make my bunting, I usually um, leave a tie off end and I just tuck those ends in, fold them over, stitch them down so that it makes a nice end. But I might join these together depending how many of these I make. So now just stitching along slowly. And now that I'm nearly to the end, I will just get another piece of bunting. And remember my real sewing machine that I use is set in to a desktop. So I wouldn't usually have the drop that I've got in this one. checking that it's right up tucked up inside which I don't think that one is there it is in fact this is pretty easy to make and I thought I would teach Phoebe how to make it because she, she has got a sewing machine. It's sort of only a weird toy one, but she seems to enjoy it. And when I instructed her on what she was doing, she was very good at remembering all the things she needed to do. So that is how our bunting is going to look. See how good that looks. What a great decoration. So I will insert the photos that I have of Phoebe's Santa sack because I can't get the Santa panel that I want. So I really want the Very Hungry Caterpillar one and every place I try to go to, I'm just on their list for when it comes in. So I'm taking it that no one can get it. And when I, they're really even on Spoonflower, there was not much in the way of Christmas panels and there is like a, a Bambi one like a baby deer one which I which I would use but everywhere I look it says it doesn't ship to Australia so um, that's a bit useless for me so um, I will be making me a some type of Santa sack and I make quite a big Santa sack for the kids and it has a roll over top it's all padded and it's got quite a wide gusset and it stands up by itself so it stands up with their name on it without any presence in it yet so it's actually a really nice Santa sack I'll include that in there um, and my next video is going to be the aprons and the oven mitts that I make for um, two ladies who have a shop that's online. I would give you the link when I do that one so that you'll be able to see it. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please let me know if there's anything else I can help you with. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.
first Christmas decorations up. This is the bunting.